Welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Omiya Kumar Das, associated with Department of Sociology, Tejpur University. Today, we are going to discuss modernity, risk and reflexivity, specially discussed by Anthony Giddens, risk and reflexivity. This is part of the course on contemporary social theory. As we all agree that the discipline of sociology emerged out of the process of modernization, the forerunners of sociology like Karl Marx, Emil Durkheim and Max Weber, they have extensively discussed on the issues of modernization. In the later period, various philosophers and social scientists have contributed to the issue of modernization. Among many, Anthony Giddens, Ulrich Back, Zygmunt Berman, they have prominently contributed and engaged with the ideas of risk, reflexivity and uncertainty. And they have also discussed various critical issues related to it. Anthony Giddens is one of the leading sociologists of the contemporary time. He is popularly known to the sociological world for his theory of structuration and his critical views on modern societies. So the concept of risk and risk society ushered new dimensions in the idea of modernity where Anthony Giddens, Ulrich Beck and Jagman Berman, they have contributed substantially. To discuss this module, we have various subsections, mainly these are modernity as viewed by Anthony Giddens, dynamism in modernity, reflexivity and modernity and risks and modern society. Before discussing other issues, we should try to understand how modernity is being defined by various social scientists. But here, it is more useful for us to understand and to know how Anthony Giddens has looked at into the issues of modernity. If you look at the whole idea of modernity, it can be said that the initiation of modernity has been referred mostly to the age of enlightenment, where traditional ideas and dogmas were questioned as well rational ideas came into the fore, mostly starting from 17th century. Enlightenment entirely changed the European mind with the discovery and invention of new ideas which challenged the traditional notion of worldview in the domain of natural sciences as well as social sciences. If we look at especially Karl Marx's work, he viewed modern society in terms of capitalist society. Whereas Weber looks modern society in relation to the rise of rational institutions. On the other hand, Durkheim holds that the organic solidarity with the weakening of mechanical solidarity is the initiation of modernity. So, if we look at how modernity has been emerged in the West and what are the dimension it has been related to, there are few things that come to our mind. So, modernity is generally associated with the following things like rise of the nation state, growth of tolerance as a political and social belief, industrialization, rise of capitalism, discovery and colonization of the non-Western world, rise of representative democracy, increasing role of science and technology, urbanization, proliferation of mass media. So these are main characteristics of modernization and how it has emerged out from the 
pre modern society there are various ideas and issues but here in this module we would try to focus mainly with the issues of modernization and how eventually anthony giddens has looked at into the issues of risk and risk society so making the difference between pre modern and modern social order he basically talks about four basic features of modernity these he refers as the institutional dimensions of modernity these are mainly capitalism industrialism surveillance and military power if we look at giddens idea he tries to explain that in a sense that the creation of modernity is linked up with the new capitalist economic order what does he mean when he says this that the modernity if you look at it is essentially related to the capitalist development or the new capitalist economic order or the global capital processes so he says in his argument capitalism is characterized by commodity production private ownership of capital and property less wage labor and class system capitalism depends on the productive competitive markets and consumer prices so if you look at this capitalism it is mainly based on the consumeristic culture that consumerism is one of the most important aspects of modernism if you again look at the second attribute that modernity is having is that industrialization so this through industrialization how technology has been growing so rapidly and capturing the world market and this technology high technology and this process of industrialization they are very uh, closely related modernity is a technology and a machine based civilization to produce goods for the market industrialism also affects other spheres of human life such as communication transportation transportation and domestic life again the another aspect of modernity if you look at that giddens defines surveillance as the supervision of the activities of subject populations in the political sphere although its importance as a basis of administrative power is by no means confined to that sphere so supervision may be directly and based upon the control of information the control of means of violence and the military power is a distinguished dimension of modernity which includes industrialization of war after having this thing in back of our mind we should try to focus on modernity how it is a dynamic process so giddens argues and explains through three main mechanisms he says modernity is a very complex process so to discuss dynamism in modernity he says it is different from the traditional societies the modernity is given dynamism by three essential aspects these are distanciation disembedding reflexivity so to come to distanciation what does he mean distanciation refers to the time and space separation in modern time the main elements are here modernity in time and space that is called distanciation giddens views that the time and space separation give dynamism to modernity the time and space in traditional and modern society can be conceived very differently time and space 
in pre-modern societies connected with physical space. In such societies, time and space was linked together. For example, when were associated with where. But in modern societies, time is separated from space, which he calls distanciation. Where this embedding as guidance refers is the lifting out of social relations from the local context and they are restructuring across indefinite span of time and space. Giddens defines this embedding as lifting out of social relations from local context of interaction and they are restructuring across indefinite spans of time and space. This embedding thus implies removal of social relations from the local context and restructuring across the time and space. He gives two types of example to explain this disembedding mechanism which are involved in the development of modernity. One is symbolic token, another one is expert system. Symbolic token are media of interchange that can be passed around without regard to the specific character of a group or individuals that handle them at any particular juncture. This is an abstract system. For an example, money, political legitimacy is the examples of symbolic token. Giddens describes how money can be symbolic token which allows space distanciation. Money as a symbolic token which can be exchanged regardless who you who use it. Expert system is a system of technical accomplishment or professional expertise that organize large areas of the material and social environments we live in today. So, if we look at all these aspects and how Giddens is going to discuss and analyze this whole issue of modernization process, it is also interesting to uh, note that towards the end, we are going to relate the whole modernization process to the idea of risk society. For Giddens, the expert system removes the social relations from the medicacies of context. Expert system is increasingly important in modern life. This removes the social relations from the immediacies of everyday life. It builds faith in a body of expert knowledge. Gideon gives the example of a car driving where without knowing the technology, the actor keeps the trust over it. So, expert system gives the guarantee of performance over time and space. It separates time and space. The disembedding mechanism in modern society is based on trust. So, Giddens refer trust as the fundamental to the institutions of modernity. So, here we should note that how trust is having a special or important place in the case of modernity. So, pre-modern societies do not require trust to a significant level as time and space separation dis distanciation is not great. But in modern societies, for him, trust is very important and trust is vested not in individual but in abstract capacities. So, the third and the most important aspects of modernity for Giddens is reflexivity. So, Giddens argues that the reflexivity is one of the key elements of modernity which is differentiated from tradition. What does he mean? Reflexivity is a kind of element which has given modernity a special characteristics so that it is different from the 
tradition. He contends that the earlier societies to some extent were modern, but such kind of modernization was a simple modernization. The present modernity is reflexive modernization. The contemporary societies offer a high degree of social reflexivity. He offers the idea of reflexive monitoring of action by which guidance means that it is the monitoring of individual actions by others. More emphatically, what is happening in wider social context, men are themselves responsible for the ongoing social conditions. In that sense, the reflexive monitoring of action is the constant monitoring of actions to reduce risk and opportunities. The two key points of reflexive modernity holds that individuals have increased knowledge which helps to reflexive monitoring of actions. Reflexivity radicalizes the modernity. The risk society is a form of modern society or part of reflexive modernization. Giddens views modernity in terms of security versus danger and trust versus risk. He considers modernity as a double-edged phenomenon. Although modernity has created vastly greater opportunities for human beings to enjoy, but at the same time, it has a serious side also. What does he mean? Like a double-edged weapon or a sword, it has both positive and negative aspects. Suppose if you look at various kind of environmental degradation, large technology, large-scale exploitation of the nature, that has given us abundant progress and wealth. At the same time, the whole world and especially the human being, they have created such a kind of situation which have endangered the life of the planet. We are so vulnerable to various kind of calamities that we have created and we are mostly responsible for that. So in that sense, this it has been used that modernity is a kind of double-edged phenomenon. Giddens views a number of consequences of modernity, giving examples of environmental degradation due to industrialization, which was never pre predicted before. The consolidation of political power into totalitarianism was also never predicted as despotism is a characteristic of pre-modern state. Giddens holds that totalitarianism is distinct from traditional despotism but is all the more frightening as a result. Totalitarian rule connects political, military and ideological power in more concentrated form than was ever possible before the emergence of modern nation states. So the classical sociology is limited in understanding of the double-edged nature of modernity as none of the founding fathers of sociology gave a proper and meticulous attention on the subject of industrialization of war. Giddens differentiated risk from danger or hazard. Risk can be conceptualized as the active assessment of future hazards. Modernity, according to him, is a risk culture. In some sense of modernity, he says that modernity reduces risk in certain areas and modes of life, but at the same time, has modernity has introduced some risks which were not part of the traditional societies. He argues that modernity is a risk culture. He says 
he doesn't mean by this that the social life is inherently more risky than it used to be earlier. For most, for most people that is not the case. Rather, the concept of risk becomes fundamental to the way both lay actors and technical specialists organize the social world. Modernity reduces the overall riskiness of certain areas and modes of life, yet at the same time it introduces new risk parameters largely or completely unknown in previous times. He, influ he was influenced by the works of Ulrich Beck. So here Giddens also looks at the interrelationship between trust, risk and danger. In modern society, trust is derived from the socially organized knowledge in the form of abstract system. The disembedding mechanisms have provided large areas of security, at the same time creating new area of risks. Giddens posits that the possibility of nuclear war, ecological calamity, uncontainable population explosion, the collapse of global economy exchange and other potential global catastrophes provide an unraving horizon of dangers for everyone. The risk is everywhere irrespective of person or space. To conclude and summarize this module, we need to know what Giddens has talked about this modernization process and his position on the risk society. Giddens has attributed mostly four dimensions to the process of modernization. These are capitalism, industrialization, surveillance and the rise of military power. Most importantly, Giddens has talked about the dynamism in modernity and he has attributed mostly these three characteristics to the dynamism of modernity. These are distanciation, disembedding and reflexivity. As we all know, Anthony Giddens has compared this process of modernization and this high modernism with a double-edged weapon or double as he has described it as double-edged phenomenon. He says that this situation where we have arrived today is not the postmodern era, rather it is the time of high modernism. He compares this process of high modernism or the process of rapid modernization to a juggernaut that we cannot have control over the ride of that particular juggernaut. It will crash whatever comes in its way or in its path. But it has both the dimensions. It has positive dimensions. It has negative dimensions as well. If we look at various kind of catastrophe and various kind of growth, these are part of the same modernization process. It's a two sides of the same coin. So mostly he has described this modern culture as a risk culture. So to look at the whole idea of modernization process broadly, his position is that we can, even if we try to resist, we will not be totally able to resist or stop the process of modernization. We have to face both the consequences. At the same time, we can have good things out of the modernization process. At the same time, we have to be ready to face the challenges which is created by the whole process of modernization process. Thank you.